Now, uh, you're a long-term Doctor Who fan. I know lots of Doctor Who fans uh, are very disillusioned with what's happened to uh, their favourite programme, uh, that it has become uh, what I would describe as a sort of woefully woke nightmare, a politically correct intergalactic uh, mess mm. Mm. of right-on nonsense. And somewhere down the line, we've lost track of the fact this is supposed to be an adventure series. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, it seems to me it feels to me now like all we're doing is being lectured mm. politically yeah uh what's your feeling uh yeah i think it's fair to say i mean that it started with capaldi and i've got a couple of examples of this where during the capaldi era there were a couple of things said that were a bit dubious peter capaldi and, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and you got a hint that things were changing and that there was yeah. a bit of a political kind of agenda going on politics um, was were rearing their ugly yeah, head yeah. What, in what yeah. way what, what happened well, let, me, let me give you an example so there's an episode i think it's like towards the end of capaldi's era where there's a female time lord and she uh she regen uh well it's it, it's originally a man so he's talking to this bloke in uh the panopticon which is like where all the time lords hang out yeah. <laughs> and uh, like a and, club. uh surely it should be a time yeah. lady uh, no, no, well, I, she, well, she, uh, she, she, he dies, and then he yeah. regenerates in front of Peter Capaldi, right, and into a woman. Okay, and then, and then, then when he's a when he's a woman, when she's a woman, she then says, "Oh, I've had an upgrade." Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no and, longer an awful and, man, yeah. now a yeah. wonderful yeah. woman. Yeah, and that's that's sort of one example. And there's also another episode I remember where uh, this is it. So, so Capaldi is like um, he meets this guy on a planet yeah. and uh, he's surrounded by women and uh, the, his assistant says something like, oh, in the future, is everyone going to be a woman? And the doctor says, we can only hope so. Uh, which, yeah. which, of course, would mean the extinction of all man. Yeah. But at that point, I was thinking, ah, oh, there's something... Something yeah. not right. That becomes know. then Wonder Woman, because Wonder Woman was the premise of that, all women together. Well, yeah, but it isn't Wonder Woman. No, it's exactly. Doctor we Who. don't want... The, well, Wonder Woman is a good example, because everyone sort of cracks on that uh, the the fact that the Doctor became a woman was like, suddenly it was like the first time that we'd had a strong female character, which, of course, is absolute nonsense, yeah, because you've got Wonder Woman, you've got, you know, Dorothy in Wizard yeah. of Oz, you've Cat got, woman. you know, Zine Cat woman. She yeah. was a cat and a woman. A uh, cat and woman. Which cat, I mean, you, yeah. That, I mean, that's, you can't. That's you can't brilliant. get better than that. Yeah, you can't. So I don't know whether. Oh. So in answer to your question, Kevin, I don't know whether it's gone woke or whether it's it's worse than what, that. What, it's just a bit signalling. Do you know, woke. it's not genuinely. Yeah, it's become it's become a massive uh, a kind of signalling yeah. uh, virtuous politics now, and uh, so there's uh, moving to a female doctor, Jodie Whittaker, and all that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't have strong feelings about it, but I think it upset a lot of Doctor Who fans. It didn't seem right. And I thought, actually, in the end, the problem with Jodie Whittaker playing the part was not that the Doctor was suddenly mm. a woman, mm. had yeah. changed sex. Mm. It was that she actually played the Doctor in the way that everyone else does, in a sort of eccentrically dressed eccentric. Oh. So she was doing a bit of a tenant impression yeah. to oh, begin with. Right. And, and and the sort of problem with this is that they they made this bold move. Well, we're supposed to think it's a bold move, but it's not really. I mean, there's been like female Time Lords in... I sound like a right geek now, and I am. Uh, there's been female <laughs> Time Lords in, in Doctor That's Who. That's what you're like here for, mate. Thank you. Uh, there's been female Time Lords in Doctor Who since like the early 70s. It's not a new thing. Yeah. Um, but the problem was is that is that she came in. She was doing a slight bit of a tenant impression. Yeah. Plus, she was going, she was going for this, and I think this is mostly in the writing, and that's Chris Chibnall's fault. Mm. She was going for this sort of slightly awkward mid two thousands American rom com thing. Yeah. Uh, um, and and that's resulted in her being a little bit unlikable. Um, can I give you an example of yeah, this? Please is, do. Yeah. So there's a scene. You know, Bradley Walsh is in it. Yes, I do. As you're from the chase. Yeah. Uh, so he's in it. And um, there's a scene in the TARDIS where Bradley Walsh is telling her that uh, he's really pleased that his cancer didn't come back. And it's the first time you hear about this, you know, that his character had cancer. So it's potentially, you know, quite a, like a, a loaded moment. Yeah. Yes. And she goes, oh, sorry, Ooh, can't talk about that. I'm a bit socially awkward. Ooh, we'll talk about this later. That's and a, and that sort of, that's, that's not a, a mid 
it's really odd and it really annoyed a lot of fa- well yeah. it really annoyed a lot of youtubers uh because it's it, it's such a cliche that that sort of yeah that sort of rom-com awkward woman in her 30s that even the it crowd were satirizing that yeah. you know if, you, if you've ever seen the dinner party in the it crowd where they satirize that sort of awkward rom-com but and this is that's not right for 2018 but they never bother with that in the original doctor who they never bothered with political things in it at all they should have just stay away yeah. from all yeah that yeah mikey thing. why has the bbc allowed uh this harmless uh very popular, venerable program to become a massive, great vehicle for right-on politics. That you know, it's just full of intergalactic lesbians and everyone's gay <laughs> and you know, disabled. Well, I haven't seen any of them yet. <laughs> Vegan well, Daleks. Uh, no, there is. A, there's that one with the scales on, isn't it? The, the, oh the yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is. A, it's a, called a Solarian. Yeah, I yeah, of course, of course. And then, of course, there's the touch. Uh, what was the touchwood thing? As there well. was no cyber women, were they? Were all yeah, cyber I men? Mean, it's a yeah. wild, what, well, because that's another thing, isn't it? Touchwood uh, um, sort of explored the gay element of it. Uh, what, yeah, but, but but Torchwood was different because Torchwood was like Russell T Davis going, "Okay, so there's certain things we can't do in." Hello. So let's stick it in on BBC Three late at night, yeah. And let's turn it into Queer as Folk slash Doctor Who. And actually, Torchwood can be pretty good. Oh no, it's, you know, no, quite I'm a good not, show. I'm not having a go at it, but I'm just yeah. saying, I'm just saying, it's kind of weird that they took Doctor Who of all programs and yeah. turned it into this panorama of wokeness and political correctness. Yeah. Do you know uh, what? Like, like most things, Kev, like yeah. at the BBC. It, it, it's not designed like that. So there's nobody having a meeting going, okay, let's get walk. You know, mm-hmm. it, it sort of happens by osmosis and there's not enough communication within the BBC for anyone to go, is this going to play well? You know, how's this going to go down in America? I mean, people talk about like the rating slump in the UK. I mean, you know, the, the, the ratings uh, went from 9 million to 4 million in yeah. the space of 13 episodes. But in America, even worse, Kevin. I mean, yeah. it's like, I think there's like there's a couple of Americans watching it, and, and that's one of their about sisters, it, yeah. And that's it, yeah. yeah. It, and and that's that's what really matters when it comes to like syndication, when it comes to Netflix. So that's why I think, I hope that they've sussed this now. You know that. The, well, the, that that, not... that was that was the reason, Mikey, that we wanted to get you on and to talk about this whole program. So I suppose the hook is that I just thought it was very significant that suddenly, out of nowhere, Christopher Eccleston, who of course play, <laughs> played the Doctor very briefly and didn't seem to be very comfortable with it, quit the role fairly quickly, uh, is back to play the Doctor again in an audio version. Uh, which seems to me to indicate that, generally speaking, they're not very happy with the whole notion of the female Doctor or how Jodie Whittaker has worked out. Well, quite quite possibly. I mean, I should ex- explain the whole thing with the audio dramas. The audio dramas are actually produced by a, a different company, completely separate from the BBC, and they, they, they've been doing these dramas for coming up for 20 years okay what they do is they use all the old doctors and and i listen to them okay, okay. as we've already established i'm a bit of a geek <laughs> and, and they are fantastic and uh i've got lots of friends who are involved in the companies called big finish who are involved in big finish or listen to big finish and the the genuine excitement of the announcement about chris what's interesting about chris doing it is not that um that's a decision of the bbc because in a way it's outside of the bbc What's interesting about it is the BBC has really publicized it. And I think that's a kind of like signal mm. to the fans at large that, okay, we get it. You, I, th- I think I think that's what's happening. And, Will he um, be back though on the TV, Chris Eccleston, do you think? Oh, can you imagine? That'd I thought, be a big story, actually, I mean, it? the thing about Chris Eccleston, uh, I interviewed him the other week, nice guy, and he, he he was a good doctor. I think it was disappointing that he went. He had a good look. Uh, and yeah. this, the, the female doctor, it's nothing, I'm not having a go at uh, Judy, uh, uh, Jodie Whittaker as an actress by any, by any means. She's a great actress. But... Uh, I just don't think the fans have taken to the idea of this change yeah. of gender. Do you? I just think it's. I just think the the central problem is it's not well written. Yeah, exactly. It might yeah, be nothing to do with her being a woman. It might just be yeah. a, not a very good series. What's wrong with Honestly, the writing, Mikey? Yeah. So there's just a problem there around around character, and because uh, I knew I was coming on, I thought, right, I'll 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 grin and bear it. I'll watch a couple more of 
This was just, it was just on the cusp of a really, he's really, really good gonna story. He's really going to spill the beans then. And he's now frozen. Uh, we'll on oh, he's back. I think. Am I back? You're yes, back, you yeah. are. You were just have about I regenerated? To... You have... yeah. <laughs> you become a, you're a woman now. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I thought I'd rewatch them. And, um, and and I think the central problem is, is it's not very good on character. So there's there's no character development. Um, most of the villain, villains are white men. You know, like if you go back to like, I remember like in 1984, Colin Baker was the doctor. And uh, one of the big villains then, he was a giant slug, Right. Yes. That's the villain. He's a that, slug. Yeah. Yeah. He wants world domination, but he's a slug. Yeah. yeah. Great villain. No, it's some white businessman in his fifties, and it's like he's so, rich. It's, I know, yeah, because we hate rich. Business. We hate rich businessmen, don't we? Yeah. And we hate, and uh, just, especially if they're white. And it's just so unsubtle. It's so un. It's like a really unsubtle, like mm. Trump sort of pastiche, and and that unsubtleness is what really gives away the writing. I just think it's like, I don't even want to say it's comic book writing because comic books are a lot better than this. It's just really un unsubtle. And I don't think that although Chris Chibnall has a really good experience of drama, he did like Broadchurch yeah, and stuff. Yeah, no, he knows I, how to write, that's for sure. I just don't think he knows. He, I don't think this he understands isn't, what This people, isn't his comfort zone. I'll yeah. tell you, It's I'll really not. I'll tell you what, no. Mikey, though, no. what um, depresses me is how, my, how diminished Doctor Who is now because when I was a TV critic uh, not so long ago, and this is sort of uh, yeah. before the age, the age of being able to watch on computers and things like that, but it's still not very long ago. In order to watch the Christmas special of the massive annual Christmas special, I'm talking about the days when Kylie Minogue was in it and things like that. Really, yeah, yeah, really um, expensive. Boy, you, you have the damned. Yeah, you had to, you had to it was all hyped up. Wasn't well, it, you yeah. had to you had to sign a form. Yeah. You had to go down to a secret room. You had to watch it on your own, uh, and to have seen the Doctor Who special before a week before Christmas yeah, Day. Uh, you, you know that that was a you could stop parties. But maybe with that's that. the problem. It became too big because when it was really massive in the Seventies and sixties. Yeah, it, no, it wasn't a massive as, thing. No, it was. Wasn't, it was, but that was how it was. It wasn't that's, as big as it but was. That's how it's meant to be. And well, I, I disagree. I, I think that when it was in all its pomp at the time, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's hyped. Though, I mean, I've it? never it's been hyped. a massive Doctor Who fan, but once. Uh, those days when it was really getting expensive, yeah, really getting yeah, flash, yeah. I was thinking, I'm, I'm beginning to get that. Yeah. And now it is just totally yeah. diminished. Hardly anyone's watching it. As you say, the writing's pretty abysmal. Mm. Uh, how, what can be done to save this venerable old favourite? Well, let me tell you, boys, I need this to get better because, j j right, about... Three or four years ago, I'm a bit of a Doctor Who fan, as we've already mentioned. Yeah, but, uh, we, we've got that bit. much, so yeah. Three or four years ago, I picked up a full-size working K9. Now, K9 is the robot dog from, from Doctor Who, right? Yeah, in a minute, Mikey, uh, yeah. uh, Ash right. will tell you a really I told impressive you that. story. I didn't have to mention it earlier, that the guy uh, went do you to want to Have you got one as well, Ash? No, no the no, guy, no, the guy who this. invented K9 was scriptwriter. Yeah, Bob Baker. He went to my school in Birmingham. He went to. You but, are. No. Oh, see, so it is a big thing. You see, Kevin, that is a big Mikey. thing, man. I, I yeah. said, Mikey, that that was the worst claim to fame oh, I've ever thing. heard, but you're very impressed I might by get it, invited you? to Doctor <laughs> Who conventions now. You could, you could, you yeah. would literally come to conventions yeah. and tell your stories yeah. about that. You get paid. Um, I've got so, a mate who's got a couple of Daleks from the sixties from the Peter Cushing movie. Is it, God, your claims that's, to fame they just are really impressive. Yeah. Have you got any claims to fame that aren't Doctor Who based? No, no oh, okay. they're all Doctor Who. Based. Uh, so yeah, well, what can be done to save this franchise, Mikey? I, I just, I just think that uh, they need to, you know, it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but they need to get like back to ba oh, basics. No, he's he was going to say back to basics. Oh, look, he's stuck again. He's stuck in it. He's back. Okay. He's, back. he's back. You're back. You're back. You're regenerated again. Have I? Who am I this time? Uh, I'm not you've, Zardy, turned, am you've, I? you've turned into Christopher Eccleston. It's amazing. Or Biggins. Now got well, quiet. I'm happy with Biggins. that. Okay, so you were saying what can be done? We lost everything there. Yeah. What can be done yeah, to so, save the franchise? So what they need to do is they need to they need to get back to, to basics and they also need to pitch this show at kids and big kids. Yes. yes? And, yeah, and yeah. not have this idea in the red that all the people that watch it are all these like social justice warriors. Yep. Because although those people are very vocal on Twitter and Instagram, some of them have still got MySpace pages, right? Although those people are really vocal <laughs> in those arenas, 
Those people do not buy the merchandise. They're not like me. They don't. Have, they don't go out and buy a full size robot dog. They're not interested. You haven't told. What, and, tell us about that. Actually, the, the robot. What the, the robot dog? Because you were it, telling us about that. I mean, is well, it? Oh, yeah, you so, know what it is? Is a K nine? Is it an original one, or you mean is it? He was. He was built for a th for a stage show. And when I bought him, and this, I don't blame Jodie Whittaker for this entirely. But when I bought him, <laughs> he was worth about nine hundred quid. Yeah. And now they're going for like two hundred quid. Now oh. I don't lay that all at Jodie. I do actually. Partially. Yeah, it's Geordie's fault. Is she quirky enough? Because of could she's would too a, quirky. Would a I quirky think. woman, you know, like say Julie Walters, someone like that, you know, would that make it? Do you know yeah. what? There's a difference with with actors about like uh, wearing quirky, like you do a shirt. Yeah. And and being quirky because yeah. because a lot of the people that have played the Doctor have been what they call personality actors. Yeah. You know, yeah. people like Tom Baker, Tom Baker people yeah. like John Pertwee. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. People who ooze. This stuff. It yeah. doesn't matter when you catch them. They could be. They kind of play themselves. In Julie Walters yeah. is sort yeah. of like that. You could, you've yeah, got to stop Walters going. Is Julie like... Walters isn't going to play Doctor well, Who in a month of Sundays. No. Someone like she could, that. She could do one of them audio adventures. Exactly. I, 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 I'm going to go out on a limb here and say she won't. No. Well, you never. Well, we never thought Christopher Eccleston would come back. Actually, that yeah, point yeah. taken. You know, However, when Chris got the job, it was still very prestigious. Funny yeah. enough, if uh, Jodie Whittaker gives it up, it's not mm. going to be that prestigious. It's gone no. down so low. It's still it Doctor has, Who. Like it that. has, I think, let down a lot of the traditional fans. Yeah. And I think yeah. what you're saying, Mikey, is the way to get them back is to remember this is a, a an adventure story. It's a thriller it for children of all ages, right? It it is. It's it's a it's what they used to call a boy's own adventure, you know. And and in the sort of twenties and thirties, they used uh, kids used to read these books called boys' own adventures, and and they and they were like, you know, they they were traditional, yep. and and there was there was uh there was a big beginning, a middle, and end, a hero, yep. a heroine. There were, it's a traditional thing, really. Mm. And yeah, the old giant slug is great as well, you know, but mm. it's just a fun adventure. Yeah. And if you watch, and I would encourage people to do this, if, if you are like uh, disenfranchised by modern Doctor Who, mm -hmm. go yeah. out and buy the old ones. You know, yeah. if you watch some Tom Baker stories from the late 70s, yeah. um, they're absolutely blooming hilarious. There's actually an episode where uh, John Cleese is in it. There pretty much playing Basil Foley, yeah. you know. Yes. It's it's absolutely hilarious, and it's a it's a repertory performance. He's got a theatre feel. All the actors are throwing it right to the back of the studio, and so yeah, there's no one of the reasons why I would not say, oh, you know, I'm not a fan anymore, is that I've still got all my DVDs, and hang on a sec, I've got I've got my old VHS tapes. So look, look at oh, this. Yeah, this, is, this is Trial of the Time Lord. Featuring, oh, yeah, you got the uh, box, the full... Yeah, featuring Colin Baker as the Doctor. Yeah. And I can, you know, oh, Ash, I can put these on whenever I want. That's beautiful, you know? it is. So whatever happens, like in the echelons of the BBC, I've still got this. He's got the TARDIS box. Look at that. Look yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. That, I mean, you That's are a fan. Uh, just before you go, Mikey, when is... Um, when is uh, Doctor Who coming back to the screen? Is there another series in the pipeline? I'm, I'm not really... Yeah, up, up, so we, from what I'm hearing, we've got one in a, a, a sort of Christmas, New Year. Um, I'm, I'm sort of out of the loop a bit. I used to I used to be a bit more involved. I used to uh, uh, host like the... Oh. Used to host He's something. done it again. I know what he used to host. He used to host, uh, I think, press screenings. He used to work for the uh, BBC. To fill in the this. blanks in. Uh, and uh, he got replaced by a woman, and uh, he's currently absolutely overwhelmed by new technology. So we're never going to no, put him in charge. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, he's regenerating. Did again. you fix it with your sonic screwdriver? <laughs> yeah. Who am I this time? Sam Fox. Yeah, Who am I? Just fix it with your sonic screwdriver. Yeah. yeah? yeah. I did. Yeah, I've got one of them actually. Now, when it um, just before you got got running out of time now, Mikey. When is it back on? Yes. Uh, Christmas, New Year. They think. That's what we're being told. A Christmas so special we'll be, and then a there's series. There's going to be a Christmas special, yeah. What? But we're thinking that next year's series is going to be much uh, less episodes. So, you know, Jodie hasn't officially said she's leaving. Chris Chibnall hasn't officially said they're leaving, but they definitely are. So I think wow. there's like, I think there's a, a number of episodes that are already in develop, development that are going to happen. Mm. But I think after that, I think we're going to get a whole new regime in, which is 
a regime change is what we need. Yeah. And I think as soon as you get rid of Chris, I'm not saying it's yeah. Jordy's fault, as soon as you get rid of Chris, we need a proper TV producer to come in and, and, and reinvent well, the let's, show. Well, uh, let's hope... Like that, Russell T. Davis Let's did. hope yeah. Doctor Who uh, polishes up it, his act, uh, raises his game. Uh, I keep saying his, her, yeah. raises yeah. her game. <laughs> she should get struck uh, off otherwise. Uh, uh, because I Twitter think won't like that. Because no. millions of people would love that. Uh, yeah. Mikey, great talking to you. Uh, stay safe uh, in outer space.